Bullfrog is still deciding whether or not to veto it. Okay, Google Frog has agreed to play Hills, so we are playing on Hills next. We've seen this map quite a bit as well, very popular map, and a much more resource-heavy map than Imperium certainly is, by about a factor of two, I'd say. Imperium does have quite a bit of resources spread about the map, but Hills basically has two natural expansions, one backdoor, which is fewer, fewer resources, and one further front, but more vulnerable, that has about as many expan resources as the main. There's also the northwest and southeast thirds, which are a bit harder to get to and a bit harder to defend, but if you can get them, they can really help out. I'm guessing that numbers will likely be going for the backdoor expansion and then going for his natural. I'm pretty sure that's what he tends to do, but he may decide to change it up this time around. Google Frog, I'm not sure what he's going to do. I'm not sure if he's playing Vekir or CISO. And given his current pattern, I'm guessing he's probably going to end up playing Vekir because he's been doing pretty well with it. And it's been just working out in general. His pattern seems to be going more and more for Vekir and less and less for CISO. So I wouldn't be surprised if you started playing Vekir this match as well. And we'll see what happens as soon as it starts up. I think the match is still getting warmed up. Not sure how it's going. Let me double check. Okay, so the game is up and the players will be joining. It should be starting fairly soon. And we will see what happens in the next game. I see what numbers decides to try to pull off against Google Frog this time, knowing what Google Frog is able to defend against. And I'm not sure what numbers strategies were. I'm not sure how we prepared for this match. I know he does like to mass game. I don't know if he actually tried to play with any particular strategy in mind for fighting Haiku, because he wouldn't have known for sure if he'd be able to fight Google Frog or who he'd fight, because really he'd have to prepare for Haiku, Shalka, and Google Frog. He wouldn't know before this tournament started, which opponent would be in the finals, and if he'd even be in the finals himself. So most important would have been Haiku, so he probably didn't practice as much against Google Frog strategies, and it's kind of hard to do that, to be honest, because Google Frog does have a tendency to kind of switch around his strategies, or has been switching out his strategies a lot since the, the official beta tournament. And that is going to be hard to deal with. For numbers, I don't know what he'd really do because I'm not the one playing, and I'm actually really thinking super hard about the best way to get around this. One of the things about, like, well, about Acorn in general is that you kind of got to play it for what's going on. It's tricky to, at this point, there isn't a well-developed enough metagame to say, do this or that build, or do this or that strategy, and vary it here if your opponent does this or that strategy else. So if you don't know what the metagame is, it becomes a bit harder to really talk about the best strategies to use, or the optimal counters, or how exactly the playstyle fits into other playstyles, and how you can work around that. As a result, it becomes difficult to say for sure what numbers could do to actually beat Google Frog, other than really pay attention, like pay very close attention to the timeline on all sides. And the game has begun! It looks like we don't have Dr. Hazard this time around. So we are, once again, on hills, we are playing Numbers is Google Frog. Numbers has not chosen this race yet, but like I said, likely to be Vekir. Google Frog has chosen to play Vekir, so once again, a Vekir mirror for the finals. We have, or finals match two. I'm guessing Google Frog is probably going to stick to Vekir. It's been working out well for him in the last few matches, and he has been doing quite well with it. I'm, he might actually be in switching to Vekir, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm mostly saying that because it's two games into the final. If he wins this, he has one more game. There's no reason to... Stop a winning formula right now. So, Numbers is moving up very quickly, getting around the map, not really scouting so much as setting up infantry. Looks like he's actually setting up infantry for a very quick, either set, probably set up a comm hub. He has been fond of setting up comm hubs right north of the main. It's really hard to see from the top, but if you rotate around the map, right north of the main, he has a tendency to set up a comm hub there to help with Zion Pulsar scouting. And, or to the left of there too. 
You look right right where the dirt meets the sand, or the sandstone meets the sand on the north side. That's when he tends to build that comm hub. So I'm not 100% sure where exactly he is building it. But that's the common place. He may, however, build it next to that path, and it looks like he's building a bit closer to it. He has, however, more importantly, scouting out the third, the backdoor expansion, to make sure that Google Frog is setting something up. And Numbers is actually building a foundation inside Google Frog's face. Okay, this is this is ridiculous. Google Frog is building, or Numbers is building a foundation inside Google Frog's face. Won't work the second time around, of course, because the depot has actually been built. The first time around, still kind of ridiculous. And the looks like probably Chef here is going around the back, trying to figure out what's going on. And as he's, as I said, he's not seeing anything. No RP is set up. He probably will build that comm hub pretty soon. And no, he's actually, he's flanking from behind. He's got the tech here coming around from behind to harass from not building the comm hub. So that's really interesting. Google Frog's also impressed, actually. And what the? Oh, he's not actually impressed. He's a bit concerned. Okay, we'll have to deal with that later. Anyway, so. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. I was just wondering why he's talking about that. Regardless, it looks like that test gear will not be building a comp hub after all. It will actually be harassing, though it may end up building a comp hub close to the unplayable pass. Numbers did build a depot, and it's probably building design pulses of his own, though it's hard to tell with the spending patterns. He does have a fair amount of QP and not a lot of Z. Oh, wait, there it is. From the north, it looks like... No, it looks like Design Pulsar actually just saw the test gear and got rid of it. Design Pulsar is being built, now Design Pulsar has been built for numbers, while it looks like Google Frog already has a fair amount of preparation for his design units. And Google Frog is actually taking this natural fairly quickly, but it looks like numbers is also taking this natural, not the back, neither of them are taking the backdoor expansions, interestingly enough. But like I said, I wasn't 100% sure they might vary it up. And Google Frog is, as we see from numbers' point of view, Google Frog is in a very safe position, not really being able to be attacked very effectively, I think. Numbers may have held, pulled back on that Teth Veer, and I, he's built he's built a foundation right outside of the Google Frog's base, a proxy foundation, right a bit south of where we're looking right now, and from Google Frog's point of view, it does not exist yet, but on the red time wave, it should, and is right down there. It looks like it's actually a depot as well, so Numbers has built a mid-ground depot just there, ready to start building up some vehicles from infantry that happen to die, well, happen to be ejected from vehicles that are destroyed. Google Frog probably will see this coming, but it's still tough. Zion Pulsar being teleported in, and a Shin Tercher coming in as well for Google Frog. So Google Frog's been really focusing on the quick air tech, while Numbers has been focusing more on quick ground tech, quick teleport and harass. And Google Frog has seen that depot. We just skipped out of it right when it happens. It's about 10 seconds ago from now when you hear this. He did, he did see it, though, so he's going to know what's going on. He's going to probably start attacking it once he gets through that Zion Pulsar. And no, he's actually bypassed it entirely. You know, he doesn't know it exists. So Google Frog knows it exists, hasn't gone for it yet, going straight from the main base, and originally he did go to attack that, but he doesn't seem to be going that ultimately. From Numbers' point of view, there is no attack coming in yet. The Zion Pulsar, however, has just come in, the Shin Tercher has also just come in, so this is likely where Google Frog actually attacks, but no, Google Frog's completely bypassing this. He's decided just to leave the whole base. He's not bothering to defend, he's not bothering to worry about the attack, he's just left the base while Zion Pulsar is not really doing too much. And the Shin Tercher is more focused on its own harassment than on defending against Zion Pulsar harassment. And Zion Pulsar harassment is continuing a pace. Numbers has started to destroy it. One of the infantry has destroyed one of the infantry, actually. Another infantry is being used for a vehicle. Will likely be a Shin Tercher, I'm sure. Though maybe a Zion Pulsar is on or a Zion Tercher, because those would also be decently effective, but a Shin Tercher is most likely. And there it is, the Shin Tercher will be built up. However, like I said before, it is on the ground because it has started attacking when it was born. Jumping back a bit further, we see that Google Frog is not really changing much. He's moving back the infantry unit that died, retreating with it, losing a foundation in the process. But the Shin Tercher is building up. He actually won't lose the foundation, just barely. Well, very close, very barely. Google Frog just saves that foundation by the Shin Tercher being built and being deployed. Just in time. And now the Shin Tercher has come in time enough to prepare for this. Another Zion Pulsar is coming in, but it won't be able to deal with this. That was when we were looking. We just jumped back from there. So, or jumped down a bit. And Design Pulsar is also coming up for Google Frog after that Shin... No, sorry, that was also Shin Tercher. It's hard to tell. And then, the Shin Tercher is coming in. We'll be defending. So Google Frog's defense is pretty hard to penetrate right now. And Numbers is still valiantly trying, but that Shin Tercher is going to stop him at every turn. And that will 
not really be good for numbers. Numbers are sending another Zion Pulse to try to deal with this. And it looks like there has been another a test structure being built up to deal with this as well. So Google Fox, like I said, is Thailand Air Attack. He did used to play Grekham a lot. Not always, still mostly Shizo, but in either case, no matter what he played, he always focused on the area, and this is no exception. He's definitely focused on the area, and not a bad idea. Numbers is almost exclusively going for Zion Pulsers, and not a lot for any test pulsers or test searchers or anything that's error related, which is not necessarily a bad idea against most players, but when you... I mean, Google Pro has already used this, and you've seen him, and he, he was using this against against Schalke as well. Google Pro does like to go air. It's, if Numbers is going to win this, you're going to have to remember that and go for Teth units more often and mix them in with the Zion units. Zion units are still great for the sieging, but the Teth units are going to be just going to actually get him beyond just that basic rush and being able to get a solid foothold and actually destroy the bug base. At this point, he doesn't have the units to do that, and what he does have, while effectively the front base is not lasting long enough against the Air Force coming in from the bug. And now he's doing a lot of all-ins too. This is uncommon. This it's very common for players in the game who are considering themselves weaker with numbers maybe because he is newer and knows who the bugs are taking to try to go for cheese or all in build in order to beat the opponent by being unexpected rather than having to slog it out through a fight through a longer battle where a more experienced opponent would have an advantage from their own experience. However, Google Frog also is very skilled at rushing and Akron is not the sort of game where you can just all in as a way out. It looks like the, all the Zion Pulses actually got killed in that depot explosion. And that will be very difficult for numbers to deal with. I don't know how he's going to be able to pull this off. I believe he's getting test pulsers. If he's not getting test pulsers, then he's lost the game. But if he is getting test pulsers, he should have a chance. Once that comes on, then he will be able to defend against these forces, the Air Force of Google Frog. Because I was saying, it's common in Arcticus games for weaker players, or players who consider themselves to be weaker, to cheese out. And yes, there are test pulsers, thankfully. So, it is common for... We can play to cheese, try to avoid a long, drawn-out game where their opponent's experience will help them more than their own. But in Akron, that doesn't work quite as well because, really, you can see what's happening. You can see it's coming, and yeah, constant pressure can work to make an all-in actually successful, but it's difficult to pull off, and it requires really good knowledge of what your opponent may do to try to defend in the process, and really good reaction to what your opponent is doing to defend. If you're able to do that, then you should be able to pull it off. If you get the pressure all the way into the unplayable past, then it works. It's consistent to the unplayable past and not being destroyed by any units going back in time or any delayed attack, then you are good. But if you can't manage to pull that off, then it's going to be very risky and probably will lose you the game. And it's a lot harder to do an Akron than in most RDS games. So the tech per health pulses are coming in from main base. Zion pulsers are going to be there to meet them, to destroy them. And really, numbers need to keep his tech pulses inside his main base. Defending is the air force that's going to attack his main base, start harassing his RPs. We already know that in about 30 seconds, they're going to start harassing them. They have been harassing the natural RPs, and they are going to be harassing the main RPs very quickly. From Google Frog's point of view, they already are. There's a minute up from numbers. Minute down, we see numbers' point of view is going to be not quite that they're attacking it. He does have some defense with the Bastion, but he really needs to get his test pulsers in his base. Self defense. All four test pulsers, if they're lucky, would be able to get rid of the Shinterkers. But he needs all four. He can't just do this too. The Bastion is too far away. It's not going to be able to hit those Shinterkers way out of range. It's test pulsers are not going to be able to get close enough if they're not trying to get close enough already. That is not going to work out at all, I'm afraid. So, Numbers he needs to jump back. He has jumped back. Hopefully, he's jumped back to stop his test bolters from leaving. Because if he doesn't do that, then he's going to be out of luck. His test bolters are one of the strategies he needs to get them all in at once. That's the best thing to do. Get them all in at once. If he can do that, he'll be able to defend against this. But it looks like no. Zion bolters are coming in for Google Bug as well to help out with the attack. So Google Bug is countering the rush with his own massive assault, and it will be much more effective. It's almost in the unbeatable path as it is. Numbers and successes are doing what they can, but they aren't going to be enough to deal with it, so Numbers will probably lose in that. Which is kind of unfortunate. However, Numbers is putting up a value defense. He is trying to do what he can, and it looks like it will have very little effect. One of the Snickers is going to die, and they are going to retreat, but Google Block is still an advantage. He took advantage of this time to start building more RPs and build more foundations. Next, Actually, a natural foundation looks like he's building his own mid-ground depot as well. 
So Google Cloud going once again for the natural expansion siege like he did against Schalke. And from there, we will probably see a quick mid-ground depot using that to 